So hi, we're here at HSMA E-Day 2021 in Dusseldorf at the Maritim Hotel. And sitting with me is Sebastian Perbs-Partigol, who's just come off stage from doing a keynote presentation. Sebastian, you're an expert in modern brain science and leadership techniques. You've just been on stage and spoken about digitizing with a brain, how brain research helps us tap into new potentials. For those that weren't here today, what are three key takeaways from your presentation that you'd like to highlight? Basically, what I, what I talked about in the introduction of my, of my keynote was that there are different stages where our brain could be. There's a limited stage, there's a hyper route, and there's an ideal stage. And what I was talking about today was how could we um, lead ourselves or lead the people we are responsible for, especially in phases of change and phases of, of uh, digital transformation, that they're really, you know, supporting this whole process rather than being against it. Because being against it is, uh, is, is one of the, the key factors why change doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So how, what can you do to tap into this ideal state of brain? The one factor is shaping your environment to, to have the, the sense of self-efficiency. Uh, when we are in, 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 in phases of change, and change very often might feel like a threat. So if you feel threatened because there's a new CEO or there's a reorganization or there's a COVID crisis or whatever those factors might be that might lead to an internal hyper of our brain, being able to um, to co-create um, this situation or co-create the solution, being part of the solution, um, having the sense of self-efficiency helps to calm down the brain uh, in phases of, of external threat. Second uh, to the self-efficiency part is the moment when we are able to co-create, the, the moment when we are able to engage ourselves our brain is releasing the ideal mix of neurotransmitters and this ideal mix of neurotransmitters um, is activating a certain part of our brain which is right behind our foreheads, mm -hmm. the so-called prefrontal cortex. Mm -hmm. And this prefrontal cortex is a part of our brain where our higher cognitive functions are, are hidden. So those are the two beauties of selfish efficiency, co-creation, being able to engage. First, it calms ourselves down. And second, it activates a part of our brain with mm -hmm. the higher f functions. Second thing I talked about today um, was the need for communication because in phases of change or in phases of threat or in phases of uncertainty people are or have the tendency to connect the dots in the most pathological way mm -hmm. and then we have this mind fucks going on mm -hmm. which is not an ideal state so in, in, in phases where we sense or when an organization is sensing some kind of a threat, the best thing this organization can do, the best thing the responsible people in the organization can do is to communicate regularly about what is going on and, and what are we going so what is going on, what we are going to do and why are we doing this. Mm -hmm. And this needs to be done regularly. So in my keynote from today, I, on the one hand side, I explained a lot of what's going on in our brain and on the other side, um, I, I was talking about real life examples. Because what I did in the last 10, 11 years is that I uh, conducted hundreds of interviews with people in organizations that were able to create a great company culture. And I, what I do is I combine those insights with the knowledge from modern neuroscience. So what I presented today was a couple of examples of organizations that um, were doing exactly this, this regular communication. And regular communication um, helps us to reappraise a certain situation, to give a cert certain situation a different meaning. This mm. can calm down our brain mm -hmm. significantly. Third thing I talked about today 
one of my favorites um, is um, humility. Mm -hmm. And we know by today from a, a huge body of research that humility, especially humility in leadership, leads to um, higher performing teams, teams that are developing much faster and teams that are more loyal. They stay, those people, both individuals, stay longer. Um, and what does, it, what does it mean? What is uh, humility? Well, it's three behaviors, you could say, or three mindsets a leader should develop. First, he should be able to acknowledge his own limitations mm -hmm. And, and share those limitations with the people around him. Second, he should be aware of the strengths of the people around him and talk about those strengths regularly. And third, he should be able, or he sh she should be able um, to um, reassess the, 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 their own opinion and to, to, to uh, question her or himself regularly. So those are the three things. Having said that, um, those things only work if, if, you are, if you appear as a high competent person. So you need to be competent with what you're doing. And if you add then those, these yeah. you know, limitations, strengths of the others and questioning yourself, this is humility at its best, and then you have those great teams. Very interesting. Sebastian, it's been fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for joining You're very welcome. Okay, thank you.